everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back with another show about failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be talking about the coolant reservoir, which is actually basically the same part across all our car lines since, oh, I don't know, pretty much we were working on water-cooled stuff. This particular one looks like it came off probably an A5, A6 platform car. Uh, they, they were very similar. This was actually a really big issue on the Mark IV or A4 platforms and also the B5, B5 and a half platforms. But before we get into all about this coolant reservoir, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which of course is DeutschAutoParts.com. They are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. They have great DIY videos. They're awesome guys, uh, incredible pricing. Um, one thing I think I've mentioned before, but Anytime you guys see a sponsor, an actual sponsor where I'm talking about them on the show, that comes as a personal recommendation from not only me, but I actually have a group of people that uh, serve as sort of an advisory board when, uh, when it comes to sponsors. So if I have a sponsor on this show, it's a really big deal. Again, it's a personal recommendation. It means I've personally done business with them and um, I recommend you guys do business with them too. So it's not just somebody wanted to throw me some money to get in front of you guys. It's, uh, it's really important to me. So uh, throughout 2015, we're gonna be expanding, I think, uh, our sponsorship program. Hopefully we can find a couple other people that, uh, that meet the requirements like Paul and the boys over at Deutsch Auto did. So anyway, check them out, deutschautoparts.com. And uh, I'll put a link to them and all their repair videos in the show notes as always. So. We got the coolant bottle here. Now, what does it do? Well, <laughs> oddly enough, it holds coolant, but it's actually a little bit more than that. Um, there's an electrical connector. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. Electrical connector right here. Um, so it not only monitors the level visually right here with the indicator. So when you open the hood, you can just look down and go, yep, my coolant's full or, oh, my coolant's low. It also monitors it electronically and um, there's a connector here. There's actually two prongs that go into the bottle through this connector right here, and that's monitored by the instrument cluster. So if your coolant level drops below those contacts, the little red warning light will come on in the cluster and say, hey, your coolant's low. It probably won't say that, but uh, uh, it'll, it'll be some sort of indicator letting you know that the level of your coolant is low. It also has a portion here on the back side um, that in conjunction with the cap that twists on acts as a pressure release in case the pressure gets too high. The coolant bottle will actually, along with the cap, allow coolant to come out this way rather than say a coolant pipe bust off or anything like that. So um, pretty sophisticated little deal. This one has actually wire looms. That's what this is right here. They're wire looms to, uh, there's a harness. It actually sits in the car um, about like this and the harness wraps around the back of it. So it's simple and it does a lot more than you would think just a little plastic ball would do. So how it works. Well, like I said, there's two contacts in the bottle, inside the bottle here that go to this connection. And then from here, two wires come out and um, I think it's monitored on all of our cars by the instrument cluster. Some of the newer stuff and some of the Torags may be a little bit different but essentially just think of it as going straight to the cluster because that's where the coolant level is monitored. And like I said, when the coolant level drops below the two contacts, that's when the little red light will come on. So let's talk about how they fail. Well, it can fail in a few different ways. Obviously it can leak. Any of these points can fail. You know, the, the welds or the seams can, can leak. Um, this little pressure tube basically can fail. I've seen that. Usually when that happens, it's more of an issue with the cap on the top rather than the bottle itself. Um, the most common way they fail is not necessarily a failure of the bottle, but the contacts in the inside actually get deposits built up. As the deposits built up and coat those contacts, the resistance value changes. The cluster is looking for a certain resistance value, and if it sees something outside of that, either not enough where the level's too low or too much, like the contacts are corroded, it'll trip the red light on and say, hey, you got a problem. That's really the most common way that these fail. I've also seen this fail in a really, really sad, unhappy way. And that's when inside the connector housing starts to leak. And what happens is this coolant's pulled through the entire wiring harness um, I've seen more than one vehicle body harness on Mark IV Jettas have to be replaced because this guy failed and actually got coolant through the entire wiring harness of the vehicle. 
It's, uh, <laughs> you know it's a bad time when you take the connector for the fuel pump out and it's full of coolant. So um, it's not very common. Again, most of the ways that this fails is the contacts get built up with deposits on it. But uh, that migration could be an issue. Again, it's, it's a bad, bad time when that happens. Harnesses are replaced, modules are replaced. It does big time damage. Thankfully, I've only seen a couple and, and it's not a very common thing. So how do we know our coolant bottles failed? Well, if it's leaking, we're gonna notice the coolant level drop. You'll also see, and it's usually the return, that there's like pink crust on it and that's a sign of coolant leak as well. Um, so if the level's low and there's a crusty spot here or a crusty spot around the connector or even down at the bottom or anywhere around the seam, okay, we know we got a bad coolant bottle. That's pretty easy. We also might get a coolant light in the instrument cluster lit when the car's cold and the coolant level's full. This was really common in the Beetles because it didn't have a temperature gauge. So you'd start the car, the car would be ice cold, the red you know, light would start flashing and you'd open the hood, the coolant level would be at the proper spot. Well, you know you got an issue with the contacts in the bottle or the connection here. Almost all the time it's the connection in the bottle. But the key to that is the coolant level has to be right. So if the coolant level's below, let's say you know, right down here, we know we gotta put coolant in it first before we worry about whether the contacts are good or not. So as far as diagnostic goes, um, this one can also be really easy or you can go sort of all the way through it and properly diagnose it um, you know, using something like a multimeter. If you look at this and it's low, and again, if you see the crust on it, you know it's a problem and we gotta replace it. Also make sure that the hoses coming off of it um, aren't swollen or anything and have a problem. The other thing you can do is you can take the lid off and you can actually just look down in there and you'll see deposits built up on the contacts inside the bottle. Usually they'll have like a gray crustiness on it or something. Um, you could even take a, a long flat blade screwdriver and scrape it off and see those deposits. It's probably time for a new bottle and a coolant flush when, um, when that starts to happen. Now we can also take our multimeter and measure the resistance. Because this bottle's empty, it's not gonna change anything on my multimeter, but you'll see a resistance change um, and I actually have one that I measured today, well, it would be yesterday, on a car with 10,000 miles, and it was fully up to temp. So you'll see that, that reading right here uh, of both the temperature and the resistance value of a basically new car with good quality coolant, no deposits on the bottle, at a vehicle up to temperature. Again, pretty easy to diagnose these failures. Uh, we talked about how they fail, the signs of failure, so if you see that, First check the level, then look inside the bottle and make sure that um, make sure that you don't have any buildup. And if you do, and put a new bottle on it, go ahead and do a coolant flush and get some of those deposits out of your cooling system. Now, is this a DIY part? Absolutely. These are really easy to put on. It's two screws, two hoses, one connector, and you might have to move a wiring loom depending on what model. Um, you're replacing it on. I will say that the beetles are a little bit tricky and I think I pull the uh, washer fluid jug out of the way in order to you know whittle the the bottle out. Um, you will lose coolant obviously you'll lose this much plus a little bit that's trapped in in the hose at the bottom so just be aware of that make sure you don't leave a puddle of coolant on the ground it is not safe for animals. Uh, for some reason Volkswagen doesn't put that bittering agent in it which I'm really surprised. Um, that's for another show, I suppose. But again, this is a really easy DIY. Anybody can do it. If you can operate a, a screwdriver and a pair of pliers, this one is no problem. I'll say all of that, but with one caution, if you have coolant migration, that's a big, big, big deal. So you may, you know, most people are probably out of their element when it comes to replacing the entire wiring harness in, uh, in a vehicle. So if you pull this connector off, and there's crusty pink inside, you know, inside this end. Definitely get it to the professionals and uh, and hope that it's not gotten all the way through the engine harness. So again, DIY, no problem. Highly recommend this as a DIY. I think pretty much any of you guys that are watching this show right now can do this one yourself. Anyway, guys, that's it. Very, very simple one today, um, but they do still fail semi-regular, not as much as they used to. You know, the other thing is, it's kind of a, a cosmetic thing. A brand new clean coolant bottle looks so good in the engine bay. Uh, I've had plenty of customers just, you know, it's all crusty and old. The contacts aren't terrible, but you know, they want to go ahead and do a new bottle because it looks 
looks really good. I also have one little trick for you. If you are having this issue where the red light's flashing, the level's good, um, and the car's not overheating, obviously, you can actually bend the prongs in just a little bit uh, inside the bottle, and that'll change the resistance and actually make it work probably for a little while. But once you start to get to that point, I really do recommend replacing it. They're not that expensive. And uh, again, it's an easy DIY for anybody. So put a new bottle on it. It's the better way to go. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can subscribe on YouTube or on the blog. Shout out to DeutscheAutoParts.com for sponsoring today's show. Make sure you guys check them out. Again, I'll have links to all of their stuff in the show notes, both on YouTube and on the blog. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, of course, YouTube, and the blog. If you guys have any questions or want to submit an idea for a show like this where I talk about failed parts, shoot me an email to charles at humblemechanic.com and put failed part in the subject line, and, uh, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I got some really good parts actually right behind the camera, and I'm working on one that a lot of you guys have asked me about. I think I found a way to get that done, so... Uh, so stay tuned for that, and I will keep you posted. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.